Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I am Zombie Zebra and this is another Rambling Zebra video. Today I'm talking about the importance of labels within disability. I often hear phrases like, oh, when I was your age, we didn't have XYZ, or looks like you're just looking for a new label, or I don't get what the need for all these names are. And most kind of annoyingly to me is when I will use terms like disabled or crippled to describe myself, and I'll get the, oh no, like, no, you're not, or oh no, don't talk about yourself that way. Because for me, being able to call myself disabled and crippled is very empowering. I spent a large part of my life being told I was overdramatic or a bullshitter. Um, lots of much less uh, pleasant labels because of things that I did because of my disability. Like, you know, I always wanted to do my homework in bed, so I was called lazy. I would forget assignments all the time or completely blank on stuff at tests. And when I would tell people that it was an accident, that I didn't mean to, that it wasn't that I didn't study, I'd get called a bullshitter. I would you know, tell somebody after I got kicked in the knee in soccer that I felt like my knee was out of place and being told I was being overdramatic. And there are lots of really serious injuries I obtained because I didn't take myself seriously or somebody else didn't take me seriously. So now being able to say words like disabled and crippled, it makes people take me seriously in a way I'm not used to and in a way that's really powerful. Because I think the most disabling thing about disability isn't the disability itself, it's the way society treats disability. I very firmly believe that if everybody had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, nobody would suffer because our society would be built around Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Parents would put their kids in muscle building activities from a young age so their joints would have the necessary support, they would grow up using, they would grow up with knowledge about how to manage their symptoms because there are lots of things that are kind of symptoms of just being alive, like everybody gets headaches, everybody breaks bones, everybody has heartburn sometimes, and if any of those things were abnormal, they would be seen as disabilities or illnesses in some way, like if the majority of, the hu of humans had unbreakable bones, and then there was this small group of people whose bones were actually able to be broken, that would be considered a disability. But since everybody's bones can be broken, it's not. It's considered normal. So if Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome were normal, I don't think it would be a disability. I think it would just require a different way of living. Unfortunately, in our society, there is not, you know, it is not the norm. And I'm not saying, unfortunately, it's not the norm, as though Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a good thing, but it means that for people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, we are in a society that is not built for us. We are in a society that values standing. We are in a society that, you know, considers inactivity laziness. We are in a society that values people based on their output. And we are in a society where, you know, muscle building in particular is seen as unattractive and that's a stereotype I hate because if I were musclier my joints would have more support and I would be in less pain and I have every intention of getting there it just sucks that the stereotype is that I am less attractive if I bulk up and get strong because it makes my body more functional and having a functional body is beautiful. There are all sorts of things that make Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome disabling but a lot of them have to do with society. And so being able to say, my body is different, my body functions differently than yours, helps people take my needs and my situation more seriously. And that's a really powerful thing and a thing I haven't had most of my life. So when someone tries to take terms like disability or crippled away from me, even though I think they mean to be encouraging, it's really insulting and really discouraging because I really rely on those terms. I rely on those labels because they remind me I'm not being overdramatic and I do have a right to be accommodated. And this also goes for mental health. Uh, some people will say things like, oh, people are saying depressed just when they're sad or, oh, all these kids think they have anxiety. They're just like too soft to deal with the world. And those are horrible misconceptions because just because you've never dealt with anxiety, just because the anxiety you have felt has always been a regular amount does not mean that's everybody's experience. And so there are people who have grown up their whole life either in a depression that they don't have the tools to pull themselves out of, 
or struggling with anxiety that they don't know how to manage. And finally, having that term is the first step towards being able to manage those symptoms. So trying to take those labels away from someone, even if you think you're being helpful or encouraging, it's really rude and really a step backwards. What you're really saying to that person, if you're trying to take away their labels or trying to convince them you don't need those labels, you're basically saying, I know you think you're different. I know you think your body's different, but it's really not. You're really just worse at handling life. Because that's what I thought about myself for a while. Before I knew about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, before I knew what was wrong, I thought I was worse at handling life. And the label of Ehlers-Danlos and the label of disabled showed me for the first time that I wasn't, that it was my body needed extra help and extra management. And that acknowledgement was hugely important to me. I'm very upset there are people in the world who legitimately don't think there's a need for labels because that's an amount of privilege I wish I could experience. But uh, at the same time, I don't because uh, Dylan Marin said this, but it's something I feel very strongly about, and that is that activism is getting to take something that hurt you and make it hurt someone else less. So I hate that I spent 21 years believing I was a lazy, overdramatic bullshitter but I'm happy that now I can say things that maybe someday will get someone else taken more seriously in my position. If I can help one person even believe themselves more or trust in their labels more, this will all be worth it. This is really sappy, but that's the whole reason I made this channel because my disability and specifically the way society has treated my disability has brought me a lot of pain and I really just hope that through sharing my experiences and through trying to educate able-bodied people hopefully there can be less pain for the next class of disabled people that come into this able-bodied world and that may sound dramatic, but it's not. And if you think it is, you haven't walked in a disabled person's shoes. And for that, you should be grateful, I guess. But just acknowledge that it is a position of privilege. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging privilege. There is something wrong with trying to deny someone else's experience. Just because you haven't felt it doesn't mean it's not out there. Just because you can't imagine what it's like to be having a panic attack that you can't stop just because you can't imagine what it's like to not be able to control your body dislocating just because you can't imagine what it's like. Even to have something like schizophrenia or bipolar does not mean that those people's experiences are less valid or that those labels are less valid or important. And if you see labels like depression, anxiety, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, disabled, crippled, if you see those things as negative instead of as like identifiers, that's something you need to do some soul searching about because that really says a lot about the way you see disabled people and maybe not in a great way. So that those are my feelings on labels. I think labels get a really bad rap. I think they're very important. So uh, remember to advocate for your labels. Take strength in your labels or don't, whatever works for you. Just remember it's your decision, not somebody else's. So don't let anyone take your labels away from you. And until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.